Hey everyone, Johnny here. Today's video is about blocking out a scene in Blender. I've recently been doing some ArchViz type renders to work on my skills. And early on I realized I'm not great at estimating sizes and distances. I've watched many videos where the presenter was just a magician at saying, oh this looks about the right size, and things just look awesome. Me, not so much. So I wanted to give you an idea at how I've started to block out my scenes to get more realistic object placement and an overall more realistic look of my scenes. First of all, modeling to scale in Blender is a great habit to get into. It makes the process a lot easier if you're dimensionally challenged like me. Second, buy a tape measure and use it to make your measurements. Now, if you're in the US or England, I suppose, most tape measures don't come with metric markings on them. Uh, you have to make sure you're getting one with that. Blender really works best when you use the default measurements of metric rather than imperial. Uh, having the subdivisions on the screen broken down into tenths is a whole lot easier than trying to deal with um, twelfths or something like that. It just makes it a lot easier. But if you're in the US and you've grown up with imperial measurements, it's really hard to get into that habit and to really start thinking in metric. Um, if you're going to model smaller items, I suggest picking up a set of calipers to measure with. You can generally get a pair for pretty cheap on eBay or Amazon. Um, they don't have to be fancy, but just enough to, to measure small pieces of objects. Now for this video, I want to quickly block out an office cubicle. Now this is based off an office that I work in. Um, so it's an, it's an area that I'm familiar with. I'm gonna start by deleting all the items in my scene and adding my ground plane. I'm gonna add this in. And the first thing you wanna do when you're starting to deal with blocking out a scene is you wanna use your end panel to enter in your dimensions. So I, clicking the end key, I get my side panel open. The first thing you're going to notice is that our scale is 1 and that our dimensions are 2000 millimeters by 2000 millimeters by 0 millimeters. Because this is a plane, it has no vertical thickness. Your default blender is probably set up in meters. So this probably says 2 meters by 2 meters by 0. You can change this in your scene properties. Clicking on units, you'll see that your length is marked in meters. I tend to do quite a bit of small modeling, and so millimeters makes more sense to me. For this ground plane, the room that I work in is 3.675 meters by 12.192 meters. If you didn't know, one really helpful thing, when you're entering in dimensions in Blender, you can enter in the units that you want to use, and it will do the conversion for you. If you are making the switch from Imperial to Metric in an, in an entry like this, I'm going to undo what I just did. You can put in Imperial units and it will convert them for you. So in this case, this room is 12 feet by 40 feet. So I can put in 12 single apostrophe for feet and then 40 apostrophe for feet. And there you can see that this changed to 3.658 meters and 12.192 meters in millimeters. So I get the same thing. All right, so this is the floor of the room. Now we want the walls. In order to do this, I'm gonna duplicate my floor. I'm gonna name this one floor, and then I'm gonna hide it. Now this next one, I am going to name walls and I'm going to go into edit mode. Generally speaking, a six inch wall is pretty standard. So I want to bring this out six inches, which is 152.4 millimeters. Of course, I could round that to 152 millimeters and we're going to be okay. I can grab, I can extrude this go to edge mode here and extrude this. And if you notice up in the top right hand corner, I can see how far out I'm extruding this. So what I would wanna do is get this to 
and then click. You can look at it up there. Another thing you can do is if you go under the overlays menu, you can turn on edge length. And what edge length will do is give you for any selected edge or any edge that's changing, it'll give you a distance. So what I wanna do is add a thickness to this side of the wall. So I'm gonna scroll in here. Now when I extrude this, you'll see to the left, I've got this. Now, you're probably saying, well, hold on a second. You said 152. So if I just keep doing this up to 152 millimeters, that and this are don't look anything alike. And here's why. If I go back into object mode, when I scaled this up using the dimensions, you'll notice that the scale changed and is no longer one by one by one. It's now distorted to the size of the object that I created. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to undo both of these extrusions and I'm going to apply the scale of this object. So control A and I could do apply scale or all transforms. Um, either one will work at this point. So I'll do all, apply scale. Now it leaves the size the same, but the scale is now one. This means when I go back into edit mode and I extrude this, it's going to have the correct distances because the object is uniformly scaled. It's just a habit you need to get into for applying your scale after you've done an object transform like I did. These edge lengths are something you're going to want to use quite a bit um, when you're doing scale modeling. However, uh, they will get in the way if there's a lot of edges. So one thing you'll want to do is you'll want to come up here under the overlays, go down to edge length, right click and say add to quick favorites. If I press the Q button to bring up my quick favorites, you'll see that edge length checkbox is now in that menu. So I can turn on and off edge length with just a single click like that. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go ahead and add my wall thickness to each side. All right, now that I've got my walls thickness added, I'm gonna come back in and in face mode, I'm going to delete this center floor, leaving only this ring. So if I add my floor back in, it's in the center and then I have a ring for the walls. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a modifier to my walls to give them their height. I'm gonna go to my modifiers tab, click add modifier and solidify. The next thing I'll do is change my offset to one. This means that the, any thickness I add will go in the positive direction. And since uh, my scale is one and I'm modeling to scale, this thickness will actually be the proper thickness of my walls. So if I wanna add nine foot walls, I can actually put in nine single parentheses or I could have entered 274 centimeters. I could have added 2.743 meters. I could have added 2,743 millimeters. Any of those things will work. So as you notice, now my walls are the correct height. Finally, I'm gonna grab the floor, duplicate it with Shift D, and I wanna move it up. I could eyeball it, or I could move it up exactly by pressing G, Z for the Z axis, and then I could type in the distance I want. This is one area where you're gonna have to use metric. So I would have to put in two, seven, four, three. It's gonna use your default units to move. So you can't put in nine single parentheses and have it uh, move it up nine feet. This a particular part of Blender won't do that if you use the 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 G Z combination or G X or G Y, uh, it won't do that conversion for you. That only works in input boxes. So at this point, I have a floor, I have a ceiling, 
and I have my nine foot walls. I'm going to rename this collection to room. And inside this collection, I'm gonna add a new collection and I'm gonna call this uh, ceiling. And I'm gonna move the ceiling to the ceiling and then I'm going to uncheck the ceiling. So I don't need the ceiling in there at this point. I wanna go ahead and cut in a couple of doorways. So to do that, I need a hole the correct size. So I'm gonna to jump to top view and I'm gonna add a cube. A standard doorway is 92 centimeters wide and 205 centimeters tall. And the thickness, we just need it to be thicker than the walls we had. So if we change the thickness to say uh, 200 millimeters, we have this. So this particular door goes right there. And then there's a second door here. And finally, a third door here. These are boxes and we want them to be holes. So what I'm gonna do is inside my room, I'm gonna create another collection and I'm gonna call this wall cutters. And I'm gonna move these three doors, move to wall cutters. Now, I'm gonna go to my walls and I'm gonna add a Boolean modifier. I'm gonna change the operand type from object to collection. And then I'm gonna select wall cutters as my collection. Then I'm gonna take my three doors, I'm gonna go to my object properties, viewport display, and say display as bounds. Now you'll notice that that just changed the last one I selected. Here's a nice trick with Blender. If you have multiple items selected and you wanna change the same property for all of them, I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back. Before you go to change something here, instead of just clicking on it, Alt click on it. So by Alt clicking on display as and then changing this to wire or bounds, you'll see that it affects all of the selected items and puts that same feature on all three. So now we've got our cutouts. And what's nice here is anything else that I add to wall cutters will, and that intersects this wall, will also become a Boolean. So say I took this door and I just wanted to, you know, create a big picture window or something, I could very easily do that. Now this particular office has cubicle walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in some basic shapes for the cubicle walls. And I go ahead and I'm gonna add a cube and this is gonna be my larger cubicle wall piece. The large cubicle walls across the front are 107 centimeters. They are five centimeters thick and they are 163 centimeters tall. Again, we want to get in the habit of immediately doing a control A, apply scale. Next, I want to add in the desk. In addition to that desk, there's actually a smaller side desk. So I'm going to duplicate this one, rotate it 90. This one is also three centimeters thick, 60 centimeters deep, but is 153 centimeters long. So I'm just gonna change the X to 153 centimeters. Of course, this doesn't account for any of the table legs or anything like that, but that's really not important right at the moment. We'll add those in as detail later. We'll actually go ahead and do that in another video. I wanna go ahead and grab all of the items that we've just modeled, and I'm gonna slide them down to the end of the room. I'm gonna duplicate all of them, once, 
twice, three times, giving four workstations. And if we go ahead and go into rendered mode, we can see now that we've got a pretty good, well blocked out scene. At this point, I would go ahead and save this and I would probably start looking at bringing in assets to replace these blocked in objects. And as long as I use the same dimensions in my detail files to create the replacements for these, then I can just drop them in later, delete these placeholders, and my scene will start to take shape. So for instance, if I were to go to my asset browser in my furniture library that I've created, I have my large cubicle wall, which I can bring into my scene. And then go ahead and delete my blocked in walls. If I go back to my rendered view, you'll see now that I've got some decent cubicle walls. And I could go in and duplicate those all the way across. And here you can see where I've completed the process, bringing in assets for everything, adding a few other set decorations, and coming up with a decent uh, representation of this cubicle. Of course, I should probably add in somewhere I should sit and uh, probably put some coffee in that cup and I'm ready to work. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll be doing some more looking at doing some detail modeling on some of these assets so that you have something to actually bring into your scene. So keep an eye out for those videos. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button or that subscribe button so you can be updated for any new videos that are coming out. If you want to follow me, I'm Johnny Gizmo on Twitter and Twitch. I hope you enjoy the video, and I will see you again soon.